Hello everyone, let us start lecture 15. Uh, today we will uh, consider the aspect of uh, uh, the situation where uh, we have galvanic coupling between two active metals and the cathodic reaction uh, is taking place on both the metals and then we will see what happens. So, our discussion the main topic remains same which is the explanation of corrosion events on the basis of mixed potential theory. And today we will take situation galvanic between two active metal. Uh, now, uh, this particular situation is uh, uh, experienced uh, in case of gal uh, galvanization of galvanization. So, where zinc coating is done on iron or steel. So, where zinc dissolves and iron gets protected. So, this is one incident. Uh, the example galvanization where zinc corrodes and iron is protected and where zinc is actually used as a coating on steel. I would say that it is a zinc coating on steel. And iron is protected. This is one example. Uh, this is another example where we do experience such kind of corrosion event is nothing but cathodic protection. So, in fact, this galvanization is another form of cathodic protection, but uh, where zinc acts as sacrificial anode and iron is protected, but there could be situations that the steel or the pipeline let us say uh, without having galvanic coating uh, of zinc, we can have a separate metal inserted into the or uh, uh, into the into the soil and then we just connect these two, two metals iron or steel with uh, that particular magnesium zinc rod and even we can use magnesium rod or you can use we can use aluminum rods. These are the situations where uh, magnesium rod, zinc rod or aluminum rod they corrode and uh, steel component is protected. So, in this case is basically uh, we have a metal steel iron which is to be protected and let us say that is uh, inside, inside the soil or maybe it can be in uh, immersed in liquid and then there could be a metal object which could be either magnesium or zinc or aluminum alloys which and then they are connected by a conductor a wire. So, that time this is protected and this corrodes. 
similar to the situation where we have this zinc corrodes and iron is protected, but that case zinc is coated on the steel, but in this case it is not coated rather that rod of zinc or magnesium or aluminum they are separately used as in the form of rod or different other shapes are possible. So, now this kind of situation we call it uh, this particular cathodic protection, this is also a form of cathodic protection when one electrode corrodes and the other electrode is protected, this is the kind of cathodic protection where we use sacrificial anode and in this case the first case zinc coating is the sacrificial anode and second case zinc magnesium or aluminum are basically rods or some other shapes. So, these are the example where we do experience a corrosion event which is the galvanic coupling between two active metals. Why? Because iron is also active, zinc is also active, magnesium, zinc, aluminum, iron all are active because if I consider their potential values. Okay. So, for example, iron E 0 of iron equal to Four, 4 volt, then uh, E 0 of zinc equal to 0 0.76 volt, E 0 equal to minus 2.37 volt, E 0 aluminum plus 3 aluminum is equal to E 0 of uh, uh, aluminum plus 3 to aluminum is minus 1.662 volt. So, we could see that if iron or zinc or magnesium or aluminum they are exposed to the environment where cathodic reaction is let us say we expose them in acid where cathodic reaction H plus equal to 2 E equal to H 2, this becomes my cathodic reaction where E 0 equal to 0 volt. So, now this particular potential is always greater than all four metals, then if they are exposed to the atmosphere in case of neutral solution and if we have dissolved oxygen, then the reduction reaction would be and where E 0 O 2 going to O H minus is equal to 0 0.4 volt. So, we could see that if these two reactions are cathodic reactions, then all the metals here whatever we have mentioned here aluminum, magnesium, zinc or iron they are all active that means they would all dissolve, they would all corrode and if we have dissolved oxygen, dissolved oxygen in acid so that case E 0 O 2 H 2 O equal to 1.227 volt. So, this also these all three reactions are cathodic to all the reaction like A phi plus 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 2 E. So, uh, if we have if we expose iron into this environments where these reactions are possible, these cathodic reactions are possible, then iron would dissolve in this fashion.
C plus. So, these anodic reactions anodic reactions would happen. So, that means, with the environments of acidic or neutral or basic any media we consider where either we have hydrogen evolution reaction or oxygen reduction those are acting as a cathodic reaction with reference to those metals and they are active. That means, all those metals whatever we are considering here are active with reference to those individual those cathodic reactions. Now, that is what we are saying that galvanic coupling between two active metals. So, this zinc individually is active, iron individually is active. So, when we combine them what would happen that is the main discussion point for today's lecture. So, in order to do that let us see how individually they are behaving. Let us say uh, if we expose uh, uh, a metal M 1 or let us say iron and zinc uh, exposed separately in acid medium and where this acid is pure acid uh, and also there is no dissolve oxygen. So, now if we plot them uh, separately so this is log i axis this is E volt with reference to S H E that means standard hydrogen electrode and let us say the P H is decided some P H pH x which is same for both the solution temperature is same T pressure of hydrogen is one atmosphere. So, all those are matching and let us say temperature is at 25 degree Celsius. So, if pH T temperature pressure of hydrogen all are matching even uh, uh, if we assume that that uh, iron ion concentration and zinc ion concentration in both the medium are similar level. So, if we consider that then this is my E equilibrium hydrogen the same level E equilibrium hydrogen then we have E equilibrium of iron this is E equilibrium of zinc. Now, for the sake of our understanding we can take them as the standard reduction potential which is 0 here which is minus 0 0.44 volt and here it is 0 and here it is minus 0 0.76 volt. Now, if we see them then uh, they are mixed potential theory as per the mixed potential theory we achieve the corrosion rate like this. So, here also I can have a situation like this So, this is I 0 hydrogen over zinc surface and this is I 0 zinc over zinc surface, this is I 0 iron over iron surface, this is I 0 hydrogen over iron surface. Now, we could see that that this is I core equal to I A iron equal to I C hydrogen over iron surface this particular point and this point is I core equal to I core this is iron this is zinc equal to I A of zinc 
equal to I C of hydrogen over zinc surface. So, this could be one typical situation uh, when iron and zinc both are immersed in acid medium. Now, we could see that in this particular drawing that iron has got a little higher corrosion rate than the zinc uh, and here since we are considering minus 0.76 and minus 0.44 which are basically the standard reduction potential. So, we are considering that iron and zinc both are in pure state. So, that case uh, uh, iron might have higher corrosion rate than zinc. But when we combine them, the situation becomes uh, different and that is the point of discussion of uh, combining two active metals. And here individually you could see that iron is dissolving here, individually zinc is also dissolving. So, zinc and iron both are active in acid medium. Now, when we combine them, we have to make use of uh, mixed potential theory. So, if we combine them, let us combine them. Now, this E equilibrium hydrogen which is 0 volt does not change for both the metals. Now, what we are doing? individually this case, in this case, in this particular situation iron and zinc both are separately exposed in that acid medium. But here now what we are doing if this is my iron piece and this is my zinc piece both are now connected galvanically. So, we have a situation like this. So, this is iron, this is zinc. So, that case what would happen? Now, as per this diagram, we could see that hydrogen evolution reaction that ex exchange current density on iron is little higher, higher than the exchange current density of hydrogen over zinc surface. So, if we follow that uh, relative positions of their uh, respective points, I can put them like this, this is the one position which is for iron and then for zinc is this is the position. Now, uh, E equilibrium iron is minus uh, minus uh, equal to 0 0.44 volt minus. So, uh, the relative position is will be here. Okay. Now, they will have their own plots. Now, this is the point and this is I 0 iron over iron. Now, there will be one more point which is E equilibrium zinc equal to minus 0 0.76 volt. So, this is lying at this point. So, it will just this drawing is bit tricky. So, you have to practice a lot just to have a relative position. So, this is uh, 
this becomes those two points this is basically uh, and if I consider these values this is E core zinc this is E core iron and corresponding to this I could see that this becomes E core iron and this point is E core zinc. Now, uh, what would happen once we connected them? One, so, now we have to make use of mixed potential theory. That means, we have to have this particular concept I C should be equal to I I A fine at E mix. So, we have to find out the new E mix position. How do we find that? So, now these are the two anodic lines. The anodic lines let me plot with the blue one. This is one anodic line, this is another anodic line. So, now they have to be connected at this point. So, now we connect them. Now, we take the new anodic line like this and the cathodic line uh, let me put it in blue green color. So, these are the two cathodic line. So, now we have to also add them. So, along this so this is added this is added. this is added. So, now this becomes my new position where I could see that this becomes my E mix at which I C hydrogen over iron surface plus I C hydrogen over zinc surface equal to I A iron plus I A zinc. Now, how do I find these quantities? If I draw a line like this, fine. Now, if I continue this line and this line also, and then the blue line, okay. As per this diagram, it is meeting like basically here it is meeting this is as per this diagram, but you can have a different diagram you will see that they will not meet. Now, uh, this quantity if I try to find out this is the hydrogen evolution on iron surface. So, let us see hydrogen evolution on iron surface what is that line? This is this line. So, this is this line this is so this point is I C hydrogen iron and then we have to find out I C hydrogen over zinc. So, hydrogen I C hydrogen over zinc is this line so, and this point this particular E mix uh, horizontal line to the current axis is this. So, this is I C hydrogen over zinc and we have to find out this line. So, the anodic uh, this particular thing we have to see where uh, this particular E mix is cutting across the anodic point. So, this is by anodic point this is I A iron and zinc we have to find out uh, this. So, this is this point I A zinc. Now, interestingly we see that uh, uh, after coupling uh, iron dissolution rate has gone down from this is I core iron not connected 
or I would simply mention like this no zinc coupled fine. So, now you could see that the corrosion rate of iron when it was individually exposed to the acid is higher than the corrosion rate of iron when it is galvanically coupled to zinc. That suggests that the corrosion rate of iron actually goes down, but what happens to the zinc corrosion? The zinc corrosion rate was at this point and that has gone up to this point. So, that means the zinc corrosion rate has increased. So, the corrosion rate of zinc was individually when it was not connected to iron was this is I core zinc not iron connect coupled, but this is less than I A zinc and this is more than I A iron when coupled and this is coupled. So, now interestingly we could see that the corrosion rate of iron goes down when we couple it with zinc and the zinc corrosion rate goes up when we couple it with iron. But when they are individually connected, I could see that the iron corrosion rate is higher than and this. So, that means when individually connected that time I core iron is greater than I core zinc, but after coupling I core after coupling I could see that I core iron coupled is less than I core zinc coupled. So, that means when we connect two active metals, the active metal which has lower reduction potential would have higher corrosion rate than the active metal which has higher reduction potential. So, this is the situation what we typically experience when we have galvanic coupling between uh, zinc and iron and zinc corrodes means zinc dissolution rate increases and the iron corrosion rate decreases. So, iron is in fact protected. Now, remember that the cathodic reaction on both the surfaces are the same reactions, but the cathodic reaction over the surface where the corrosion rate decreases that means iron that cathodic reaction rate is more than the cathodic reaction rate of that particular on the on the, on that active metal which is which whose corrosion rate is increased. So, for example, here if I consider this if we consider this the I C hydrogen over zinc surface has in is more than sorry it is less than I C hydrogen over iron surface. So, that means I can have a statement like this cathodic reaction preferentially takes place on iron. So, iron becomes cathode, but that does not mean that the iron dissolution rate is not taking dissolution is not taking place, but it is taking place at a much lower rate than had it been exposed to that particular environment without having zinc layer on it. So, this is the basic principle of this particular condition what we have started with uh, uh, that is uh, when what happens when galvanic coupling between two active metals uh, uh, in a corrosive medium. And here we have considered the example of uh, zinc and iron coupling in acid medium and there we have seen that the cathodic reaction preferentially takes place on iron and so iron becomes cathode and of course, uh, anodic reaction which is nothing but 
zinc dissolution. So, like here what we have seen this particular case uh, I zinc dissolution rate increases or I A zinc is more than I A of iron when they are coupled uh, preferentially takes place on zinc surface. So, zinc becomes anode. So, it is a basically preferential anode it does not mean that uh, uh, cathodic reactions are not taking place on both the surfaces, but the metal which has higher reduction potential when it is coupled to a, a, a reduction with a, with a metal which has a lower reduction potential would get protected due to the higher dissolution rate of the metal which has a lower reduction potential uh, in comparison to the first one, uh, but the cathodic reaction would preferentially take place on the metal which has a higher reduction potential, but remember this situation is for, for both the uh, when both the metals are active in that particular medium when they are individually exposed. So, let us stop here we will continue our discussion on this and try to link it with cathodic protection that means, the other instance where iron object is protected by zinc or iron plates uh, zinc or magnesium or aluminum plates or rods. So, let us stop here thank you.